Hello and welcome back to the trash. And today, we are going to be discussing the finale of Tough as Nails Season 2, along with the final team competition that I didn't talk about last week, because I just thought I'd lump it in with the finale. So, let's start off with the team competition episode. Obviously, we went into this episode with the knowledge that Dirty Hands and Savage True were all tied up for team competitions, and this was a tiebreaker round. Swifty was the one who sat out, and I'm really sad Freight Train couldn't join Dirty Hands for the last team competition. I think that if he would have been there, I don't know if they, I don't know if Dirty Hands would have necessarily won per se, but they would have had a much stronger shot compared to their four members. And they have gr they have four great members, but I think Freight Train just added to the team a lot in a way that was missing from Dirty Hands. I would say Savage Crew ended up winning the individual the team competition it was a drywall competition and Danny came back to guest star Danny from season one and I was a big fan of that they brought back Danny they brought back Lee for the individual final five competition that was something I really enjoyed too one of the things I really enjoy about Savage Crew winning is that Dirty Hands won last season so it's almost like settle the score Savage Crew won this season that's something I really liked um, I do like all the people on Savage Crew uh, it's definitely a good, solid group of people. Not Dirty Hands is too, but I, I think Savage True is just a really good good team. They work together very well, and they're just a group of people who all enjoy each other's company. So that was good to see them um, joining forces and ultimately winning the team competition. Next up, we can talk about the Final Five competition. It was laying shingles on a roof, and whoever finished last, the two people who finished last, will go into overtime. And... The overtime really had very little to do with the individual competition. They went from shingles to plumbing. This was the challenge where they brought back Roofer Lee from season one. And I think that was kind of an odd choice. I mean, yeah, they were doing a roofing thing, but that was an individual challenge that could have been literally anything. And they decided to do a roofing challenge and bring back Lee. Lee was a pretty big character on season one, but I wouldn't say he's necessarily the essential person that represents season one he's not the most recognizable season one name is what i'm trying to say so i just thought it was kind of interesting how they brought lee back to oversee the work sarah won though beasted it out she did but as i was saying with the overtime of swifty and arida it was sort of a plumbing puzzle they had to install pipes according to a plan they were given and after all that was over they would have had they would have had to turn on the water for a shower and a sink and if they did it correctly it would have worked they also had to be able to flush a toilet that was connected to the pipes. And the first to get it done was Swifty. Arida made a pretty crucial mistake, and she put one of the pipes in the wrong spot early on. And she didn't really realize that until much later. So that was kind of the end of her. Arida played a really strong, really strong game, end game, I want to say. With the two people she beat in overtime, Meryl and Liz... Those were two top contenders, and Arida just wiped them off the board. So, that left the final four as Swifty, Sarah, Scott, and Zeus. And then we head into the final four competition. Now these two, the, the individual competition and the overtime, these were pretty much related to each other, which the last two very much weren't. And they had to, they were both challenges that involved beams and ironworking. But for the first one, they had to build a steel beam structure. And they even had to give instructions to the crane operators, Joe and Bill. I mean, who, who, who wouldn't be able to remember Joe and Bill's memorable appearance on Tough as Nails Season 2? They're, pla they're practically celebrities. Best crane operators around. And so Sarah, with her win in the last individual competition, got to choose the pairs for this team, for this individual competition, which I thought it was kind of weird that they were doing pairs this late in the game. But I guess it makes sense, almost. Because I really... I kind of want this to be how Tough as Nails happens from this point onward. Is you have the final four, and then you have... You split them up into two pairs, and they compete against each other. And the pair that loses goes in overtime. I really like that idea. I hope it continues for a lot longer in Tough as Nails' run. And Tough as Nails just got picked up for two more seasons, so... Safe to say... It's not going away anytime soon. However, Zeus and Swifty definitely had problems communicating with 
Joe and Bill, professionals, best in the business crane operators, and that kind of slowed them down. It was mere seconds away. The show proudly edited it to where it seemed like Sarah and Swifty did it a lot quicker than Zeus and Swifty, but I think in actuality, it was probably mere seconds because that was very close. And it does kind of make you wonder if Scott and Sarah went into overtime, I'd think obviously Scott probably wins that and the final three would be Swifty, Zeus, and Scott. I don't think it would change the result much. I think Scott still wins in the end, but it's interesting to think about. But no, Swifty and Zeus went into overtime and this was a very simple overtime. You just had to climb a steel column and ring the bell. That's all you had to do. And as soon as they revealed this challenge, I'm like, well, Sw well Zeus is winning. There's Swifty has no chance. With his injured foot and with Zeus's passion for climbing things and being a lineman, and he even said earlier on in the episode, oh, I have a passion for climbing things, foreshadowing much. No, Zeus, Zeus had it. Zeus was never losing. One of the most predictable eliminations, I would say, of the entire show's run. And Zeus ended up winning himself a spot into the final three. So the final three, Scott, Sarah, and Zeus. And so the final three, they all gathered around. They had all their videos from home, which I always appre I appreciated last season when they brought in the loved ones. They couldn't do that this season. They had to do videos from home. But that was still nice to see. It was still nice to see all the videos from home. And the one thing I'm thinking throughout this entire episode is I really hope Zeus wins. I love Scott, don't get me wrong. But Zeus just has such an underdog story. He, going into this episode, he was, so, he was such a likable person. He was such an underdog. Whereas Scott, he's been dominating challenges for who, since the beginning. Zeus, yes, he's also finished very high in every single individual competition. But he's also just that kind of guy that you want to root for. Also, Freight Train came back, so that was something. And so, I'm going to try and break down the final challenge. Play I'm going to try and break it, break it down for you. Because it was, it was a lot. They had to smash through a wooden, wooden wall. Then use a jackhammer to drill through concrete block to get out some bolt cutters, which they then needed to cut through a metal chain link fence. Once they cut through that chain link fence, they had to stack up 10 lobster traps from episode 2, I want to say, yeah, episode 2, to make some stairs. And then they had to climb those trap stairs to get up on a platform. And once they got up on that platform, they had to cut through another chain and they had to get a, they had, which would have, the metal beam would have fallen, built a bridge for them to get on another platform. And then, once they got onto that other platform, they had to unravel two lines of rope, which is very similar to the first ever overtime of the season. And that rope eventually led to another platform, and, but this one, this is the one for the win. It had the keys to the Ford F-150 truck. And whoever got to that platform first was the winner of Tough as Nails. Now, it was pretty close throughout the entire thing between Zeus and Scott. Sarah at one point was doing pretty well, but she fell behind a little bit in the lobster trap stage. Whereas Zeus powered through that lobster trap stage. Like, it was no joke to him. And so, it all came down to unraveling the rope. Sarah had just gotten to the rope unraveling, and Scott was already halfway done with his. Zeus was there, he was trucking it out he was getting it done but scott just managed to blow through it he managed to make it seem so easy and he managed to go up to that platform and take the win for tough as nails season two let's go scott i know scott had a lot of support coming into this season i i certainly was rooting for scott along the way i know a lot of people definitely commenting on my videos were rooting for scott so it's so nice to see scott take the win even though i was more more or less rooting for zeus i'm so glad that if zeus didn't win Scott won, because Scott's a legend, Scott's a beast. How can you not like Scott? And then at the end, they even had the section where, that they had last season too, I remember, I remember this last season. They had a section where they were talking about what, they were talking about the contestants and what they had done after the season, and it's always nice to see where the contestants are at, you know, after the season. So it was really nice to see that. And then the episode ended with the satisfying conclusion of Scott taking home the $200,000 and the Ford F-150. So what do you guys think of the winner of Tough as Nails? What do you guys think of the finale? What do you guys think of Savage Crew winning? What do you guys think of anything about Tough as Nails in general? I would love to hear your thoughts. This is definitely not the last video I'm doing on Tough as Nails Season 2. I will be reviewing the season. Um, I might do a video comparing it to Season 1. I might do a video 
breaking down the edit of the season and see to see how each person was edited and what that ultimately meant for their placement in the competition. So I hope you guys will stay tuned for that. I am the trash and I will see you in the next video. A uh, goodbye.